What is going on guys, Vlad here with SolusPLC.com and today we're going to be talking about connecting to your PLC rack over Ethernet IP. So this was a question that I've received over LinkedIn, which was essentially somebody who bought a Ethernet card from eBay and that a specific IP address on that card was already set and that person wasn't able to um, essentially connect to the card to reset the IP and set it to something that's on their network. So we're going to be talking about 1756 ENET cards, EN2TR cards, ENBT cards, as well as EN3TR cards. So those are the different ways that you can connect to your control logics chassis and they have their own differences so of course the en3tr is going to be the latest revision but some of the older cards have different methods to uh, connect with them and there's a way essentially to not knowing the ip address to connect to the card and reset that ip address through boot p before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. And we're going to be looking at that today. So the first thing that we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to notice that the on the EN2T card as well as the EN3TR card, you're going to get a display of the IP address that's going to be directly on the card. You're not going to have this on the ENBT or the ENET cards, which makes it a little bit difficult to figure out the IP address once you've purchased this card from a third party and uh, they have already set this IP address through boot P or other means. Now, what you can do is, once you pull out this card, I'm just going to press on the side clips here on my rack and I'm going to pull out the card all the way up. So first of all, we're going to look at, like I said, the part number. So it's a 1756 EN2T card slash B. You also have the part number and you have the firmware revision, which you can upgrade. But if we flip the card over, what you'll notice is that there's going to be a diagram for what are called dip switches or just essentially rotary switches. And there's going to be different settings. Now, the first setting is going to be from 1 to 254, which will, based on the description here, as well as the data sheet, just put the card on the private network of 192.168.1. Whatever the setting of those switches is. The second setting is 888. So this re restores the module to its initial out of box settings. And last but not least, all other values are essentially not working. They're going to uh, allow us to go on boot P. So that's going to be the initial setting. There's going to be DHCP and then user Ethernet. Now, the method that I've mentioned that can reset the card to its default setting is going to be this 888. So in case you were paying attention, this card was already set to my private address network, which was 192.168.1.11, I believe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these rotary switches and I'm just going to push the rack out of the way so you can focus and see a little bit better. You'll see that the switches are located at the top of the card and you can actuate them through the use of a small flathead screwdriver, which is what I have here right now. I'm just going to try and get the camera to focus a little bit better, I guess like so. And what I'm going to proceed to do is I'm going to set those rotary switches to the factory reset setting, which is going to be 888. So let's do that right now. And it might not be very clear from the from the focus, like I said, but there's going to be a little arrow on each one of those switches so that you can position that wherever you need them to be. So that's set to all eights. The next thing we need to do is to put the card back in and power on the module. So I'm going to put it back in and do notice that I'm doing this while power is on. So these modules are actually rated to be manipulated like such, but in a factory setting, maybe you have other devices in your panel. So I wouldn't necessarily recommend touching a live panel and making these modifications uh, live. I do recommend that you power down and make sure that you're locked out and tagged out. In any case, we're going to, as you can see, get a message that's telling us that it's going to be resetting to uh, a complete reset. 
This is going to show us the firmware revision of the card and it should tell us that boot P at this point is active. So let's just double check if it does anything. Actually, it tells us to change the switch settings. So what we're going to do is I'm going to remove this card and I'm going to put those switches back to 000. zero, zero. And 000, zero, zero, of course, allows us to reset. Let's see here. So 000 is not within the first range. So that allows us to use boot P when we connect in order to set the IP address of our specific card. So I'm going to plug this back in and let's see what's going to be the message that we get. So the card is going through a test. This is the normal startup sequence and we should be able to pass. And then it, it should display the Mac address of the card. So revision 5.028. Everything looks good, so there's no longer the red light flashing that we had prior to uh, setting the switches to three zeros. So link down, which is good. Boot P, as you can see, so boot P is enabled and it's showing the MAC address. That way you can write this down or essentially memorize it. And if you have only a single device, then it should be the only device that's going to come up on boot P. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to take my Ethernet cable, which I showed to you uh, which you've seen many, many times. And I'm going to plug this in at the bottom of the card and the other end is going to go directly into my laptop. So I do recommend that whenever you're setting IP on your uh, IPs on your devices, you do plug in a single device just to avoid, you know, some mismatches or if you have other devices talking, it might be a little bit difficult if you're going through switches. I do recommend that you connect directly to your devices when you're setting IP addresses. So let's uh, transition to boot P right now. Okay, so before we launch boot P, it's always, always very important to know what the settings of our network adapters are. So I'm currently in the network and sharing center. I'm going to click on this change adapter settings button. And from here, I'm, I should be able to see all of the network adapters that are currently on my laptop. And I've mentioned this a couple of times before, but ultimately I'm going to have some VMware uh, drivers that we're not going to touch. We're obviously connected through the Ethernet port on my laptop. And then we have the Wi Fi connection. So make sure that you're looking for the right port that your device is on. So for me, it's going to be this Ethernet unidentified network port. So we're going to double click that. Next, I'm going to go into properties IP version four, and I'm going to obtain an IP address automatically. I'm going to also obtain DNS service uh, server address automatically. I'm going to hit OK. OK. And in order to make sure that those settings did take, I usually launch the command prompt. So you can just press on your search and search for CMD. And here we can type IP config to make sure that we have no IP address or we have a essentially a specified IP address on our Ethernet adapter. So that's that looks good and everything is fine. Next, what we, we can do is we can search for boot P. So this utility comes pre-installed with many Rockwell devices. And if we open this, we'll need to make sure that the card that we select matches with the name of our Ethernet adapter. So here at the bottom, as you can see, I have Realtek PCI GBE family controller. So that's exactly what I'm going to select right here. And I'm going to hit OK. So you're going to see this pane, which is going to start scanning for all the devices that are on that specific Ethernet port. Like I said, it usually works with switches and devices connected indirectly to your Ethernet port, but I do recommend that you go directly to the card. And what's going to appear um, at some point is that you're going to see an Ethernet or a MAC address, which is going to be in our case, a DHCP MAC address. And what I highly recommend is that you triple check that the, the MAC address that you're seeing on this display matches the MAC address of your card, which in my case, it does not. So this is the MAC address of the driver on my laptop. So something is not working correctly. I'm not able to see the boot P device, which is going to be the uh, EN2T card that we've uh, just plugged in. So what I'm going to try and do is reconnect the cable once again. And if that doesn't work, so as you can see, that worked. So I reset the cable, which re reset the connection. And now we're seeing the right MAC address for that specific card. So like I said, pay very, very close attention. A lot of people assign an IP address to a different device, which isn't what they're essentially seeing in uh, in reality. So 
here's the boot p card we're going to double click this and what i'm going to set as an ip is 192.168.1. let's say 24 and of course you can set it to whatever you'd like in your specific network and i'm going to hit ok so you'll see this relationship appear at the bottom here and of course it's the same mac address along with the ip address now what you need to do is disable boot pdhcp in most cases it's going to tell you that it's unable to service dhcp request from your specific adapter to that card and sometimes it does send but what's going to happen if you click this a couple of times then it will reset that and say once again that it's unable to service that specific request don't freak out this is because the ip address of that specific card is now in a different subnet especially in my case than what my uh, computer network card is set so we're going to go back into these drivers i'm going to double click on this ethernet network i'm going to click on properties go back into that ethernet version 4 and set this 192.168.1. any octet which is going to be within that specific network give it a subnet mask click ok click ok and click on close and if we go back to this specific pane in boot p which i haven't closed yet we can once again issue this disable boot p command and this should uh, succeed at this point but since we've already succeeded once it should be fine the next thing that we need to test is we can test a ping to that specific device. So if I go back to my command prompt and type in ping 192.168.1.24, this should go in without any problems. And as you can see here, four pings went through and everything we've got a reply. The next test that I'd like to do, since we have a PLC in that specific chassis, and as you saw, couple of input and output modules, what I can do is I can launch RSLINKS Classic and make sure that that connection has been established. So we're going to actually build a new driver just so I can show you that once again, I believe I've shown this in a couple of videos, but I'm going to click on this communication, configure drivers. And here there's going to be two different drivers that you can use over ethernet. So it's going to be ethernet devices or ethernet IP drivers. So let's Let's select this one and we're going to call it AB Ethernet IP 10, that's fine. And what we're going to do is we can either bro browse a remote subnet or a local subnet. And in my case, of course, we set up the card already, so we're browsing on the local side. I am going to select the same driver once again that we've uh, worked with before. I'm going to hit apply, hit OK. And I'm going to close out of this menu in order to start looking for the driver. And that's that's going to be AB Ethernet IP 10. And let's just expand that. You'll notice that the card is right there. And if I click on this little plus icon, we're going to exp expand the back pane. And you'll notice that the PLC, which uh, you saw in the camera footage, is now located here. We have the Ethernet card, we have the input, and we have the output modules. We have some analog stuff. But we can start essentially connecting to any of those devices. We can talk to the PLC. We can flash the PLC firmware like so. And we can, of course, reconfigure some of the settings of our card. So if I right click at the top here, I can go into module configuration. And at this point, I do want to verify that boot P is disabled. So notice that our uh, network configuration is, so we're going to set this to static. Of course, the boot P is disabled at this point but um, we're going to double check the, the IP address took, everything looks good, and we're going to hit on apply. And let's see if the configuration downloads to the card as expected. Sometimes this uh, interface doesn't, doesn't always work, so let's just, uh, let's just give it a moment. It looks like everything took. If we, if we click on okay, everything is still displaying. So that looks perfect and fine, and we've set a new IP address for the card. We've reset it through dip switches, but let's look at the other method. So I'm just going to connect a USB cable to the front of that card and we're going to be exploring the same connection through USB. Okay, so the USB is plugged in and usually what happens in RS Links is that it detects the connection automatically. So there's no need to create a specific driver, but in case that you do, what you're going to have to do is configure drivers and there's going to be this virtual backplane 
uh, driver that you can connect for your USB. So this calls out SoftLogic's 58XX or USB. So for some of the older versions of RS Links, you're going to have to create that driver. That being said, for myself, I'm going to close out of this and I'm going to scroll down until I see this little USB icon. And once again, I can expand that to see what's currently connected on that specific port. And you'll notice that one of the devices is going to be the Ethernet card that we've added recently. So I'm going to expand that and see if that allows me to browse down to the backplane. It's uh, lagging just a little bit, but essentially if we browse down once again, it's uh, giving me a little bit of grief. I don't know if it's RS links that's causing the problem, but essentially it's lagging a little bit, but I can still kind of click the devices and make sure that I go down all the way to the PLC. And at this point, you can select this specific path for your PLC, go online, download a program, and see all of the other devices that are on that specific rack. And of course, if you have an older type of a card, so if you have the ENET, which doesn't have the DIP switches, and doesn't have a USB port, it's rather a RS-232 port, you're going to have to purchase a specific converter from USB 232. And the driver that you're going to use if you click on this communication configure drivers is going to be this RS 232 DF1 devices, or sometimes it's going to be a DH485 UIC devices as well, depending on if you're going to perhaps an older PLC system or instead of the EN uh, ET card. So we're going to not mess with that since I don't have that specific card on hand. But that was all for today's video. Hopefully you learned how to connect to your control logics system and be able to reset a card that has been set to a specific PLC, which you do not know in advance. Of course, on some of the older cards, you don't see them on the window of the card. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video, if you've enjoyed it, that would mean absolutely the world to me. And if you have any suggestions for the channel, what kind of hardware software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that down there as well. See you next time. Take care. Bye.